In today's episode, I get to share with you some awesome news, and I also get to tell you a little bit about my fear before I started this podcast and how I overcame it. I also tell you a story from the Old Testament and about a shot that I had to give myself and about an accountability group I joined. So stay tuned. Welcome to Stories of Hope in Hard Times, the show that explores how people endure and even thrive in difficult times, all with God's help. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson. Join me on a journey to find inspiring stories of hope and wisdom learned in life's hardest moments. Hello, Hope Nation. This is Tamara K. Anderson, and I have a special episode for you today. It is 2020, and I had a wonderful podcast last week that talked about goals and how to reach them, and some accountability and stuff like that. And so I'm so excited to start off this year and tell you a little bit of change that's going to be happening with the Stories of Hope and Hard Times podcast. The first thing that's going to be changing is I'm going to be moving to a weekly podcast release. And what this means for you is you get double the content, which is fantastic. But Part of this also may be me taking a a segment like today and diving a little bit deeper into it than we were able to go last time. And so I'm really, really excited to have this new year to bring you more content and share more stories with you that hopefully will be meaningful to your life. So let's kind of back up a little bit and remember that last week I interviewed Alan Golich and we talked about his bike crash and we talked about the fear that went along with um, setting new goals and trying to build his body back to where it used to be. He had to learn to overcome that fear and learn to trust his body again um, after being in such a severe bike crash. And I wanted to kind of piggyback onto that story and tell you a story from my own life. And that story is actually the story of the launch of this podcast, which I thought would be really, really fun to dive into today. I knew I wanted to start a podcast in 2018, and I researched and I started 2018 really strong. I said, this year, 2018, I'm going to find out all there is to find out about podcasting, and I'm going to learn about it. I'm going to do it. And and so I did. I hit 2018 with ground running. I found out that I, I named my podcast. I did I did surveys asking people to give me input on that. I I spent a lot of money and had my logo for my podcast professionally designed and people voted on it. And I even picked a format for my podcast. I spent a lot of time um, listening to people talk about podcasting, people like John Lee Dumas and stuff like that. And so I spent a lot of time um, diving into podcasting. I even recorded my first podcasting episodes of May of that year. And then I hit June. And it was like, I hit this dead stop. And it was because my kids got out of school and I made this conscious decision to stop and not do anything during the summer. Like I even stopped social media. I wasn't on Facebook at all that summer, dead stop. And come September, I got my kids back in school and I started just really re-examining where I was with my life and what my goals were. And I remembered the podcasting and I started journaling about this. And all of a sudden I realized I was scared to death to start and launch this podcast. It really freaked me out. And I, I, that's why I had stopped and not made any progress. I really had to pause and think about it and write about it. In fact, I even drew a picture in my journal and I had this goal and it says, this is how I feel. My fear is real and it's keeping me stuck on my path. And so there I was, little me, stuck on the path 
of this mountain that I wanted to climb, but there's this huge word in my way. It says fear. And I learned that while I was looking at the fear, I couldn't move forward. It was too scary. I'd had some experiences where I was picked on and bullied when I was a kid. When I was a kid, guys, this is decades ago. And it was preventing me from moving forward and launching my podcast. Isn't that funny? And so I... I realized that I had to raise my sights a little bit higher and start thinking of what are the benefits of the podcast? Who will this help? And set my sights on that and say, Tamara, this podcast has the potential to help people who are struggling, to help people who are who are lost their hope. And as I focused on the benefit of doing the goal and not the fear itself, basically focusing on faith and what I believed the outcome could be, then I was finally able to move forward again and really uh, answer a lot of my fears in my journal and say, you know what, to me, it's worth it to put myself out there, to set this brave new goal. And I did, I launched in January of 2019. And it felt so good to get that done, but it also felt good to not have that fear incapacitate me anymore. And so I, I wanted to talk about that. Alan talked about it a little bit last week, but we often have goals that we love and we get excited about. And then all of a sudden we stop and we're like, oh no, just kidding. I don't want to do that. And it's often because there's an underlying fear. And so if you're setting goals this year and you're finding yourself stopping at some point, stop and examine that. Maybe you need to journal about it a little bit. And so it was at this time when I was struggling with this fear that was holding me back that I ended up joining a, an accountability group called AMP by Benjamin Hardy. And he is fantastic about motivating people and helping them move forward in new and powerful ways. And he recommended that we read a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. And this book was pivotal in my me learning to face my fears. And one of the cool things that she teaches in this book is that there's five fear truths And the first one is the fear will never go away as long as you continue to grow. So if you're doing something scary, you're growing. Um, Fear number two is the only way to get rid of the fear of doing something is to go out and do it. And isn't that true? For example, I, I struggle with chronic migraines. And one of the things I did at the beginning of 2019 was my uh, neurologist recommended that I start a migraine shot that's once a month. And I have hated shots since I was a little kid. I had to get some when our family went out of the country to Argentina and I had to get these shots like every six months. And since then I've had like this chronic fear of shots. And so the thought of giving myself a shot every month petrified me. And I finally realized, Tammy, you're going to be scared of it until you do it. And I have a friend who's a diabetic who really just talked me through it. She's like, Tamara, you can totally do this. <laughs> and so it's true. I found that fear of truth to be true. The only way to get rid of the fear of doing something is to do it. And now I'm not scared of doing my shot every month. Um, I've been doing it for a year now. It's fantastic. It's actually helped cut down on my migraines. Um, so it's, it's really been a blessing to me. But sometimes we've got to just do it. Fear of truth number three, the only way to feel better about yourself is to go out and do it. And, and it's true, when we're fearful of something, our self-esteem is kind of fragile because we don't feel confident, we don't feel courageous. And so if we do even little things to move us forward, maybe it's cleaning out a drawer in our kitchen. Maybe it is um, going through and decluttering our closet. Little things like that, even though it may not be... Um, with relation to the specific goal that's giving you fear, just taking little steps forward of momentum, setting a goal and achieving it will give you courage to do bigger and better things. Fear truth number four, not only are you afraid when facing the unknown, so is everybody else. And guys, this is something I think we need to realize is that 
Fear is a universal feeling. Everybody is scared. And so we need to realize that everybody feels that way. And the question you need to ask yourself is, do I want to be one of the people who lets fear stop me? Or do I want to be one of the people who conquers their fears? And hopefully you can be one of those people who conquers their fears. Fear truth number five is pushing through fear is less frightening than living with the bigger underlying fear that comes from a feeling of helplessness. Isn't that powerful? So these are the five fear truths that I learned as I read, feel the fear and do it anyway. And they really helped motivate me to look forward with faith, to let that why pull me forward and to realize that I'm not alone when I feel this. There's an awesome scripture story in the Bible that talks about this same sort of thing. And it is the story of the children of Israel in the Old Testament. And they wandered, they left Egypt, they went through the Red Sea, they had all these amazing experiences where God helped them find water when there was no water, miracle after miracle. They get to the land of Canaan, which God has promised them, and they send these spies in. And these spies go to check out the land that God has promised them. And the interesting thing here is that 10 of the spies come back and they say, in Numbers chapter 13, they say, we came to the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. It's a fantastic land. It's producing food, and they brought fruit from it. And so this is the fruit thereof. And he says, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And, and, and basically, they say, it's a great place, but the cities are walled, and we can't make it there. And uh, we're, we're basically giving you a fear report. We're too scared to make that step. And then two others came back. This is Joshua and Caleb. And they said, very interestingly, in verse 30 of the same chapter, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Let's go do this and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. And so you have 10 saying no, you have two saying, let's do this. And how do the children of Israel react? Well, if you turn to the next chapter in chapter 14, it says the congregation wept all night in verse one. <laughs> so they're crying. They're like, no, we don't want to do this. It's easy for us to laugh about it. But at the same time, I was in the same place in my story. I, I totally stalled out. I didn't want to do it. And they murmured in verse two, and they said to Moses and Aaron, would that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God that we had died in this wilderness? They're like, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? Let's, let's get a new captain and we'll head back to Egypt now. After all these miracles, let's go back. And this is so typical of us guys. Sometimes we, we set brave new goals. We want to move forward and all of a sudden, it's like we are scared to move forward. We're scared to take those brave new steps. We may take a few steps and then we stop and we're like, this is too hard. I want to go back to the way things are or the way things were. But guys, you can never go back. You can stall, sure, like I did that summer of 2018 and do nothing. But that goal is going to hang there in your brain especially if it's something you feel God wants you to do. And so my invitation to you is to face your fear, find your why, and move forward. Um, Joshua and Caleb in, in verse 9 of chapter Numbers chapter 14 say, actually let's read 7 through 9, they said, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceedingly good land. So find the good things in the goal. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. Uh, for they are bred for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So basically, Joshua and Caleb are saying, don't be scared. 
You can do this. Focus on the goal. Focus on the goal. Focus on the end result. Let that pull you forward. Write about that end result. Visualize it. Help it come to life in your mind. And then pray for help. Last week, Alan talked about accountability. And he said that in order to set a really good goal, we needed to have a a specific time-bound goal. So set a time limit for yourself. You need to write down, break it down the process so that it's it's doable. You're not taking just one big goal and saying, I am going to launch a podcast. No, break it down into baby steps. This month, I'm going to learn all about podcasting. February, I'm going to uh, figure out the name of my podcast. March, I'm going to, you know, and so break it down into bite-sized pieces. And then Third thing is have somebody that you're accountable to. And and Alan talked specifically about having a friend, uh, a coach, um, and especially, and he said this, the greatest accountability we have is to God. And so I think we need to involve God in our goals as we set them any new year. Set those goals with God have him also help you be accountable because he's the one that can um, give that life to your goal and help you achieve it. And so I just wanted to invite you as you are looking and have set goals or hoping to set new goals to don't be, do not fear like the Israelites, but to have faith. There's one last verse I wanted to share with you before I sign off today And it is found in Deuteronomy. And this is right before the children of Israel do go into the promised land after they have wandered for 40 years. They kind of stalled out too. I stalled out for three months. They stalled out for 40 years. So um, hopefully you choose to stall out if you stall out for less time versus more time. But in Deuteronomy chapter 31, Moses gives the children of Israel these final, powerful, amazing words. He says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And so that's my invitation to you this year as you set brave new goals. Be of good courage. Don't be afraid. God is on your side. He wants you to become your best self. And you can and you will become your best self. As you set these goals, as you set up uh, accountability with friends that you have or friends that you'll make, I, I was able to join an amazing accountability group that helped me reach my goals. I would, I would tell them my goals for the next week and that I'd have to account to them at the end of the week. And you better believe there were Saturday nights that I was scrambling because I knew I had to give an accountability to them. And so that idea of having an accountability partner is powerful. It is so much easier to get a goal done when you're not just by yourself, when you have people that you know come Monday morning are going to say, Tamara, did you get that goal? And you either have to say yes or no. And gosh darn it, if I I did. I worked really hard so that I could say yes because I wanted to tell them that I did it. And so accountability is one of the key, key ingredients to goal setting. So many people don't do this part, and that is another reason why they fail. So be sure that you do all three parts, that you set a specific time-bound goal, that you break it down into bite-sized pieces. This is my goal for the month. This is my goal for the week. This is what I'm going to do today. And then get your accountability partners and even get more than one. There are some great resources out there to help you with this. Um, Find an accountability partner, reporting to an accountability partner. You can report via email. You can report via Zoom. I'll put these links in the comment. Uh, One accountability group I have met with, uh, we do a monthly call, but then we do weekly accountability on an app called Marco Polo. And so we just record ourselves videoing our our report for the week. And it's fantastic. And so find what works for you. Do it. And I believe in you. You can set brave new goals that stretch you, that, that maybe you're scared of. But you can do anything with God on your side. And I totally am a firm believer of that. I've seen it in my own life. 
And I wish you the best this coming year of 2020. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. I know that there are many of you out there that are going through a hard time, and I hope you found things that have been useful today as you listen to the podcast. If you would like to access the show notes from today's podcast, visit my website. It is storiesofhopepodcast.com. That is where you'll find favorite quotes from today's episode and shareable memes. And those are fun because you can share them with your friends on social media. You will also find the links mentioned throughout today's episode so you don't have to remember what those were. And also all the tips that were shared. Sometimes tips are shared so much throughout an episode you forget. What were those great things? So go to the show notes, storiesofhopepodcast.com to look up these fantastic resources. You know, if someone kept coming to mind during today's episode, perhaps that means that you should share this with them. Maybe there was a story shared or a tip that they really, really need to hear. So go ahead and share this episode with them. May God bless you, especially if you are struggling with hope to carry on and with the strength to keep going when things get tough. Remember to walk with Christ and he will help bear that burden. Above all else, remember God loves you.